Coming up in this episode, I'm going to be talking all about Hang Time, a brand new roller coaster that's just opened at Knott's Berry Farm. Along with that, I'll be talking all about the different attendance results for theme parks all across the world. It's always a fascinating report when it comes out each year, and I look forward to sharing the details with you in this week's episode. I'm Sean Sandbrook, welcome to Theme Park Worldwide Weekly, and that means it's time to cue those titles. Wednesday the 23rd of May 2018 and welcome to this week's video. So yes, I wasn't joking when I said that May was going to be a busy one for Theme Park Worldwide. Lots been done over the last few weeks and lots still to come. Obviously over the next few days there's going to be lots of new content from Icon at the VIP media event and also from the launch day this Friday as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that all across the next few days and into the weekend here on the channel. Uh, then next week I'll be heading out to Sandusky, Ohio for Cedar Point. I can't wait, I'm gonna be there for five days. I can't wait to do lots of footage, uh, lots of off-ride shots of the coasters, some full review videos for the channel, and of course a travel vlog and vlogs from the park as well. So I'm so excited, I can't believe it. Next Wednesday, I'm gonna be jetting off uh, on that trip. So stay tuned for a travel vlog, hopefully towards the end of next week. But uh, yeah, lots of other new videos come online to check out them vlogs. Uh, we had a vlog from Drayton Manor, uh, which is worth checking out. We went on the uh, upgraded Wild West shoot out the sheriff showdown so that's worth watching uh, along with that lots of other new videos that have gone online Paltons Park uh, we went there and filmed the vlog along with our stuff from the Isle of Wight and things a couple of weeks ago so lots of new content to see here on the channel uh, like I say May certainly is a busy month for us and uh, yeah it's certainly set to continue as we move forward into the summer now every year uh, theme parks announce basically what their attendance has been and uh, it's always a fascinating one and I'm going to talk all about it along with an exciting new ride that just opened over in California. It's all coming up in the weekly news roundup. This is a coaster that I've been following for quite some time now, ever since they removed their iconic boomerang at Knott's Berry Farm and they announced their Gerstow Infinity Coaster hand time. I've been following that project and I must say after going to Knott's Berry Farm and it was great to see it all, but I feel like next time I go, there's a lot more now know about the history and how close the, the Knott family worked uh, with Walt Disney, with Disneyland being just down the road. But uh, yeah, there's so much to discover there, including this new ride. And I must say it looks absolutely fantastic. It's a Gerstlau Infinity Coaster, like I say it's called Hang Time and it opened last Friday, they had a big media launch, invited all the press along, uh, on ride footage, all that kind of stuff and it looks like a really good ride and now if you've watched the channel for a long time or even in recent vlogs you'll know that I'm not a massive fan of some Gerstlau rides and that's many there, uh, their coasters like the multi-inversion coasters and Eurofighters that I don't really like. What I do really like the look of is the Infinity Coasters with the lap bar and that's exactly what Hang Time is. Uh, now this is some great reviews. I've actually had a few people uh, who've been out there who I know this week who sent me some reviews and they've basically said it's a fantastic coaster and fits in really well with that whole boardwalk area of the park. Uh, they said the hanging on the drops great uh, but the most thing what they've said is the fact it looks stunning in the dark. They've got this fantastic system built into the track uh, where there's all LED lights, it can do patterns, it can change colours and it looks stunning. I mean Knott's Bay Farm is a park that I'd love to see in the dark when I do go out there at some point, uh, I'll definitely make sure I plan the visit to see this park in the dark because uh, it does look stunning. It launched with like live music or like surfer based music, like Beach Boys style, uh, firework display behind the coaster and they were sending the coaster around as well with the fireworks going off in the background. It looked great. Uh, at these parks over in the States and Europe, they really do know how to open rides and do big ceremonies. But uh, hopefully we're going to get something like that for Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Like I say, it's Wednesday today when this has gone online. Uh, as you're probably watching this, I'm in Blackpool uh, enjoying the media event there and uh, Mac Rides are there, the Thompson family. and. Yeah, it's great to see they've done that. But in general, we don't really get in the UK, especially many grand openings and things for rides. So it's good to see that Icon were getting that, uh, which is fantastic to see. But uh, yeah, it's got some fantastic reviews. It's 150 foot tall. It's got five inversions on hang time as well, and it looks like it goes through them beautifully smooth and not too fast either. 
it takes some of them elements really quite slow, meaning that you've got time to enjoy them. And obviously, you're going to get lots of hang time, hence the name of it. Uh, yeah, it's been designed that it does pass over them quite slow. And it's much like Icon, really, at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Obviously, I did ride that for the first time uh, last Saturday, and I loved it. It's brilliant. In fact, it's my favourite coaster in the UK. Uh, but I thought I won't talk about it in this episode, because if you want to see my full review of Icon, filmed about a 10-minute video when we first came off, our first reactions. Uh, so check it out. I'll put a link down below in the description to the Icon review. Um, but yeah, like with this ride, and much like what Icon is, it goes through quite slow on the inversions, meaning you get that hang time. It's just a nice, smooth, relaxing experience. And I didn't think I'd be saying that about a girl style, but uh, there you go. It looks really enjoyable. Hang time at Knott's Berry Farm. When will I get to go out there and ride it? I'm not too sure, but I'd like to think in the next couple of years I'll be back in California. Really enjoy it. My favourite state uh, in the US that I've been to so far. But uh, yeah, there you go. It looks like a fantastic ride. If you're going this year, send in your reviews. Comment below on the video. It's always great to see what you guys think of these new rides. Uh, now, every year there is a report that comes out which tells us all about theme parks, water parks, museums and their attendance numbers. 2018 is no different and it's come out for all of the results from last year, 2017. This is a massive report that's put together uh, and if you want to read it in more detail, which I really suggest that you do, if you go down below in the video description, I'll put a link uh, to the PDF file where you can go through it all uh, and see it there. It's lots of pages, like 30 odd pages full of information. But I'm going to talk about a few bits that are quite relevant to us, uh, a little bit about the UK, uh, America and Europe parks as well, just to give you a bit of an idea. And so it's always an interesting read, it's always fascinating. It gives you the gate figure they've had, the gate figure of the year before, and uh, how much that's gone up or down percentage wise. So it's a really interesting one to see, especially uh, with the UK ones. I like to know where we stand and stuff in terms of how busy our parks are and things. And then, yeah, it's th things are certainly growing. Uh, growth's quite big around the world, especially over in China. And if you want to know more about that and didn't catch last week's episode, I talk all about that uh, with a bit of a dedicated section on how the Chinese theme park industry just keeps going up and up so it's well worth checking out uh, but yes what are the busiest theme parks in the world I'm going to share with you now the four busiest theme parks in the world. Uh, in the first place, we've got Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom uh, with 20,450,000 guests a year. There's no wonder the queues get stupid in that park. Uh, that's an increase of only 0.3% on the year before. Uh, just after that, in second place, just slightly behind, uh, Disneyland in California, the original that opened in 1955 with 18,300,000. Uh, that's up 2% um, with that one on the previous year. Uh, next up, Tokyo Disneyland, uh, which is under a couple of million under that, uh, with 16,600,000. That's up 0.4%. And uh, the fourth one I'll share for you is Universal Studios Japan, with 14,935,000. That's up more than the others at 3%. So the top three uh, busiest theme parks in the world are owned, all Disney parks, are all owned by Disney, uh, or the Oriental Land Company, as it is over in Tokyo. But uh, yeah, I've done all of those, apart from Universal. But next time we go to Japan, I'll definitely go there and see it. Uh, let's talk about Europe then. Uh, now, the busiest theme park in Europe, obviously this one's quite easy to work out. It is Disneyland Paris uh, with 9.6 million visits in 2017. This is the best bit though. I'm a big fan of Disneyland Paris or Euro Disneyland as it was first known when it opened in 1992. Uh, and with this, it's actually gone up. 15% on 2016's numbers. That's incredible. I love Disneyland Paris. There's a big expansion. They've been taken over by the Walt Disney Company. And obviously we've got this big expansion coming to Walt Disney Studios and rumors of new rides in Disneyland Park. It certainly is a bright future for Disneyland Paris. And I can't wait to follow it here on Theme Park Worldwide. And just genuinely have uh, visits with Charlotte and, and family as well. So that's really something to look forward to. Uh, in second place, just behind, uh, is Europa Park. I say just behind, quite a bit. Uh, 5.7 million and obviously Disneyland Paris was 9.6 uh, but that's up 1.5% so nowhere near as big an increase as Disneyland Paris but uh, in second place Europa Park in Germany. Third place Walt Disney Studios also at Disneyland Paris. It's interesting Europa Park is just above that for now but the gap is is closing in. I remember when Europa was quite a bit over uh, Walt Disney Studios, now they're quite close because Walt Disney Studios in 2017 got 5.2 million visits. Uh, that's up 4.6%, but obviously when you think uh, Europa Park's 5.7, Walt Disney Studios is 5.2, 
they're quite close, aren't they, now? There's only, what, 500,000 uh, guests in that one. That's if I did my maths right. I'm not very good with that. Um, and in at fourth place there, you've got Ftelin with 5.18 million visits, and that's up 8.7%. So many numbers in this episode. Not very good with maths and numbers, so bear with me. But I think I've done well so far. But so, yeah, read the full report, guys. Really worth checking out. Once you've watched this episode, uh, open up another tab. Go and check out the full report. It's great to see about the water parks as well. I think the busiest water parks over in China followed by the ones in Disney, which is fascinating. And uh, the busiest theme park in the UK used to be Alton Towers for a long time. That changed a few years ago after the awful incident, what happened on the Smiler uh, back in 2015. But uh, Legoland Windsor remains our busiest theme park in the UK with 2.2 million visits uh, during 2017. And uh, Alton Towers Resort stays in there at 200,000 less visits than that at exactly 2 million. But I presume that'll go up this year with Wicker Man and that'll probably overtake uh, Legoland. But uh, that just shows there needs to be a lot more investment at Legoland, which is luckily coming from this plan that we spoke about a couple of weeks ago uh, to really boost the throughput on them rides because there's so much there and certainly, uh, you know, so many visits is coming in, it needs more rides. There's a lot there, but it needs a lot more capacity. And so let's hope we think about that with a new coaster, maybe a couple of new coasters and a dark ride as well. But uh, there you go, how fascinating is that? Just for five minutes of going through them reports. Really interesting to see. Uh, comment down below, what do you think to that? I'd be really interested to see. I always read your comments down below here on Theme Park Worldwide uh, across all our videos. It's always great to see your feedback with those. It's now time for Merch Paradise. I said earlier on, make sure you check out our review from Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach from when I wrote it for the first time last Saturday. A link is down below in the description. Uh, but yes, here's a look at the certificate that I got with the VIP boarding card. Just says I rode Icon there, the UK's first double launch coaster at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Nice certificate there, made a card. It's not just like a little paper one, but uh, yeah, I think it's quite nice that one. And here's my on ride photo as well for those of you that didn't see it on our social media. Uh, there we are. Looks like my eyes are closed on there for some reason. I can assure you that they weren't. I think I was just that excited. I was quite emotional. When you watch a ride being built for so long, it does make you quite uh, emotional when you get on it for the first time. But uh, there we are, me and Alex there, enjoying Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. In next week's Merch Paradise, I'll show you a bit more Icon merchandise because I've seen some really nice things that I want to buy and I'll be sure to share them. And then after that, I'll be on location from Cedar Point in Ohio. And I just can't wait. So it's time for the final section of TPW Weekly. Let's have a look at what photos you've been sent in this week for Interact With Me. First, we've got Theme Park Amazing just there with a Tiger Rock on ride photo. We then got Sam who had a photo with me and Alex and also Lisa just there with me and Alex as well. So thanks for sharing those. Another person that met myself and Alex was Jaden. So thank you very much for sending that one in to us. We then got Steve with a jewel on ride photo there. So thank you very much for sending that one. Uh, we then got Jenny with a Colossus on ride photo. So thanks for sending that one in, Jenny. Next up, we've got Alan with a family photo at Disneyland. Loving that, creating those family memories at Disney. And then we've got Corey and girlfriend there at uh, Wicker Man. So thanks for sharing that one. Then got Johnny who had a photo with me and Alex, popular me and Alex this week with the photos. It's always good to see you guys at the park. Uh, and then we've got Lucy who had a photo with me and Charlotte's Brick at uh, Alton Towers there on the plaza. And then we've got Clint with a swarm on ride photo, which is great. Thanks for sending that one in. And then Bradley who had a photo with guess who? Me and Alex. So thanks for sharing that one. And then we've got Mark, uh, who's got a photo with his son there, uh, with Lee. Oh, I'm glad you got to see Lee. Hopefully I'll ride Icon with him next week. Uh, and then we've got Kyle on Icon there as well. And then we've got Martin, who had a photo there with me. And also Amy, uh, with a chap-ass on-ride photo there from Fantasyland. And then we've got Ethan, who had a photo with me there as well. So thanks for sharing that one. Next up then, and finally, we've got the birthdays. Happy 40th birthday to Rachel. Have a good one. Happy two-year anniversary to Corey and his girlfriend. Congratulations to both of you. Happy birthday to Poppy. Have a great day, Poppy. And happy 10-year wedding anniversary to Kaz and Wayne. Thank you very much to all of you for sending those in. And thank you for watching Theme Park Worldwide. Uh, if you want to send anything in for next week, drop us a message on Instagram. Uh, send it as a message and not a story, because uh, it will come through better quality for you guys to see on the video. And also, Send them over on Facebook via private message. 
Thank you very much for watching another episode of TBW Weekly here on Theme Park Worldwide. I look forward to bringing you another episode next Wednesday. I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thank you very much for joining me. And that means it's time to cue those credits. See you later, guys.